we're going to be doing the basics on how to measure for a hernia support valve from determining girth, width, placement of the opening in the belt and the size of the opening that we will need in the belt and then go into any modifications that may be helpful with doing this type of support belt. Okay. Thank you. So here we have this gentleman and he has not only one hernia, which is a good size, uh, he also has another hernia on the other side. And so what we're going to want to do is support this hernia. And uh, may I have you turn toward me a little bit so you can kind of see, we're going to need to be able to cup and uplift and support this type of hernia here and also be able to support the hernia on the other side. Okay, so what we're going to do is determine the length of the belt that we need. And it's good to kind of do this, not only standing, but I'll have him lie down to see if there's a big difference between lying and standing in the girth measurement of the hernia. So the first thing we want to do is measure in line with the stoma and in line we're right at the edge here at 52. So while he's standing up we can determine how wide a belt we're going to need to support this hernia. So I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to come up and you need to have about an inch minimally three-fourths of an inch above the weld of the bag. So nine inches is going to give a good width for this belt to support this hernia. It's important to get the correct size opening for the belt so that it's not too snug around the pouch or not too large so that he's going to be bulging way through. So how to do that with a one-piece type pouch, you're going to fold the bag over to where you hit the weld line on both sides. And you're going to measure from the weld over to the weld and give a little tiny bit of space here so it, it's going to be a three and a quarter inch opening. Okay. While he's standing, it's important to determine where the opening in the belt will be placed because if it's too high or too low it, we may not get the proper support so i usually kind of get near where you want to get this hernia supported and measure up so measuring up i get like four and three eighths inches from the bottom of the belt so that's what i'm measuring right now so we need to support here and up. So he's been lying down and his hernia has been reduced and we've placed the belt with him lying down and you put the belt so that it's comfortably snug. You should be able to slide your fingers underneath there easily, but it's still giving him a pretty good support. And his pouch is a very flexible kind of pouch, trim to fit. So with this opening, and his having this large hernia, he could bulge through. So what I've added was this prolapse over belt, which will give a little extra support over that area. So I'm going to put that on. And now we're going to have him stand up and see how this belt is All fitting. All right, so now he's standing up and you can see that the belt is giving him a nice wide support in the front. We don't even see this little hernia here. And this pretty much has reduced this large hernia on this side. However, I'd like him to turn a little bit toward me. And when we've got the nice width in front, but we're going to have a little issue here when he sits. So let me have him kind of bend his leg up to kind of demonstrate what happens if he's sitting. You can see that it's going to curl and roll and it may dislodge the belt. This is showing the nine inch belt that I've sized for him. And typically the nine inch belts are contoured so that it would be wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. 
uh, most women are a little wider at the bottom and narrower in the waist. However, with a man, it may be better to reverse so that it's wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. So, uh, and which is what I've done for this particular gentleman. I've made it so that it would be wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. And when we had the belt on, you could see how that it was going to dig and cut at the groin. So what we're going to do is modify the belt so that it won't be doing that. And we do that by cutting the stitching. And it doesn't ruin the belt, it actually improves the belt to do that. So we're going to separate this bottom panel of elastic where we have what we call a faggot stitch. So I'm going to start at the Velcro and I'm going to stitch, cut all the way down. So you can see where I have cut starting at the hook part of the Velcro and I've gone all along this faggot stitch. However, I've stopped right here where the bulge of his hernia is because we want to give support in front for that hernia and this way it'll give support in front but allow it to come up. It'll be a cupping and uplifting and be out of the leg in the side area and along the back. And whenever you cut it, it has all these little f fuzzy stitches. Uh, he can, uh, in the evening, while he's watching TV, pull all the little threads <laughs> off. <laughs> okay, so now he's put his belt on. He's done a really good job. He's got uh, it nice and supported in the front. He's got the nice support underneath. He's got his little flap on there to support so that he doesn't bulge through the opening. But you can see where the belt is down below. So now he's going to show you what he can do at this point to modify and adjust it. So he takes that lower strap and he's just pulling it up so that it just hikes up all around the back. Very nice. And so now when he sits down, it will be out of the bend of his groin. It's giving a cupping and uplifting and helping to support that hernia.